we're going to talk today about hash codes in Java. So basically a hash code, the hash code of a class is a method that returns a number assigned to that class. Okay, so for example, we can have in this class here, I create a person class with a name and age, and you initialize it in the constructor. I overrode the equals method for a good measure. If you want to see how to do that, please refer to the uh, overriding the equals method video. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to override a method called um, <clears throat> hash code. So this method is public. It returns an integer. It's called hash code and it receives no parameters and it returns a number uh, for the class. Okay. And this is going to be, this becomes really useful when you're thinking of, um, of classes such as a hash map uh, and other classes that use the hash code as reference to identify objects. Uh, those will be in a different video, but for now, suffice to say that hash code should give a number that sort of represents this class and this instance of the class. So for example, one thing that I can uh, give as a number here, I could say, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I can say just return the uh, age, for example. That's a number that's kind of unique to this class, right? Uh, so here I have my test one and I have three people, two are the same, J36, J36, J27, right? And I'm going to print the hash code of the first one, the second one, and the third one. So if I compile this and execute, then I'm going to get exactly what I am uh, looking for for this. Let's see if, if that works. So I'm executing this, and you can see in my screen here that I have 36, 27, 36, which is exactly what I had here. I mean, person two, person three, person one. So person two is uh, 36, person three is 27, and person one is 36. Now, uh, an interesting thing though is if, if I'm just returning the age, right? If I'm just returning the age, then, uh, well, two people with the same age, they're gonna have the same um, the same hash code, but they're not, necess but they're not necessarily very similar. Right. So one of the things and we're going to revise what's called the contract of the hash code. So the norms by which it uh, it is um, ruled. One of the norms is that within the same program, I'm, I'm sorry, if equals returns true. When you call it in two objects, then hash the then the hash code of each of those objects should be the same. So if these two P1 and P2, if the equals method returns true, then the hash code must be the same. And right now it is, but also my hash code is the same hash code for any 36 year old, because I'm just returning the age. So we can make it a little bit more complicated, right? So I can say uh, the age divided by the name of the, uh, the length of the name, for example, okay? And just to be clearer, we can say this. Now the age, divided by the name of the length and then this is cast as an integer oops there so if we do this right and we're going to compile this person class and then we're going to go and execute the um the test class we'll see that ooh, all people, old persons here have the same hash code. And that is because 27 divided by three is the same as 36 divided by four, which is the length of that name. So what this proves is that you can be pretty unique. I mean, the, the, the chances of the age divided by the length of the name being the same in people with different name and different ages are really way slimmer than finding two people with the same age, but it's still uh, common. So usually what people want to do with these methods is to create, uh, to insert some uniqueness here, right? And one, for example, one typical implementation of a hash code might include something along the following lines. Something that says, for example, uh, final, uh, something that uses, for example, the number 31, which turns out to be a bitwise number, really easy to multiply by other numbers. And usually prime numbers uh, are, are 
good for this. They're fast to multiply because they can be converted to bitwise operations sometimes. So 31 in particular. So let's say the following. Let's say we have a result here. Uh, sorry, it has to be an int. So we get int result equals uh, 31 times, uh, I don't know, times uh, the length of the the length of the name, for example, this dot name dot length, right? And then we add it to uh, 31 times this dot age. Okay. Now, this one, okay, might be uh, you might still, you know, if two people with the same name, right? and with the same age, with the same name length, and with the same age, we'll still have the same hash code. However, we can make this a little bit better, right? So instead of using the name, the name's length, we can use, for example, something with the characters of the name, right? So we can use something with the first character and last character of the name, and look at the ASCII code of that character and multiply by 31, for example, right? Which is something along the lines of what the hash code implementation of the string will do. So here what I'm doing is I'm multiplying 31 by the hash code of this string. The string class overrides the hash code method. This is a method again that comes from the object class. And then plus 31 times uh, this uh, dot h for example. Okay, so this can be one of the one of the um, one of the implementations for hash code. Of course, if you factorize this, you can do this, right? And that would be fine. And this, for example, then you just return this. Uh, let's re just, just return this. You can just return this number, right? And what happens here is that if I compile this class and I test it then, we can see the following we can see the following behavior. Now I execute this class and I get the same number for the two objects that are equal, person one and person two, but not person three, right? And that is kind of what you want. You want the objects that are equal, person one and two, to have the same hash code and person three to have a different hash code. It is, so the, the, the rules, the contract of hash code here, right? And you can create more complicated implementations with uh, bitwise shifting and whatnot. But within the same program, the result of hash code must not change as long as the variables that make it equal to another object doesn't, don't change. So for example, if name and age never change right, on these two objects, then these two objects should have always the same hash code. What some, so one one uh, way to thinking of hash code, for example, is to say, okay, uh, I'm going to use the time of the system to generate a very unique code. Well, the problem is that as the program is being executed, the hash code of the object is going to be changing with the time. So you cannot use the time, for example, as a variable to generate a hash code in this case, right? Um, so it is important to know that whatever you use to generate the hash code, the hash code has to stay the same throughout the program unless the variables that make it equal to another uh, object change. Now, if the equals returns true when called with two objects, the hash code of those two objects should be the same, right? And we, comp we comply with that with the hash code function that we just did. However, there is no guarantee that this hash code is not going to be the same as the other two. If two objects are equal, the hash code must be the same. If two objects are not equal, the hash code may or may not be the same, okay? Now, hash code is used to allocate objects in a way that makes them easy to find. So if all objects return the same hash code, then it's not easy to find one individual object, right? Uh, this is in, in some data structures. Now, if you try and strive to get a hash code that is unique for, you know, for, for every object, as much uniqueness as you can find, well, then it's going to be easy to find because you can get the hash code of the object and look up, look up that number and find that object in a data structure. If there are two, one or more objects that share the same number, well, then you do a, a deeper search, but then you're searching among a very few 
objects, very few instances of an object. So I hope this clarifies a little bit of what the hash code does and how it should be, uh, what, what is the implementation. There are several implementations of hash code. This is an extremely simple one. Um, there are slightly more complicated ones, and again, many use uh, bit shifting as a way to speed up the computations as well and make them uh, quite unique. Thanks for watching.